What's the difference between a leftist and a liberal? My very bright friend did a fantastic job of explaining that for Americans, so I thought I would do the Australian version. Because here in Australia, our Liberal Party is our right-wing party, and we have Labour on the left. It might be a bit confusing, especially with the way Americans use the word Liberal, but I've done a bunch of reading to hopefully make sense of it, and hopefully it'll make sense when I explain it to you guys. Now, on the Australian left with Labour, meant to represent the worker, the labourer, the working class people. So with that in mind, it makes sense that the party that would oppose the party for the workers would be a party for the boss. Because the Australian Liberal Party is liberal in the sense of neoliberal. This shit brought us Reagan and Thatcher. Favouring policies that promote free market capitalism, deregulations and reduction in government spending. Should I do more on this sort of stuff? You've got it. Alright, we should probably start at the beginning where the terms left and right and the sense of politics comes from. Now we're going back to the French Revolution, so like the 1780s, 1790s, and the people on the left supported change and supported the revolution, and the people on the right supported the monarchy and wanted things to stay the same, supported the status quo. So it should come as no surprise that the people on the right were wealthier people and the people on the left were people that weren't so wealthy. So people on the right were doing okay under the king's rule, people on the left not so much. It makes sense? And so terms like progressive and conservative make sense once you know the history with conservatives being on the right because they want things to stay the same and progressives being on the left because they support change and want things to progress to something better. And if we look back over history, it appears that as things like kingdoms become less relevant and disappear, they've just been substituted with Capitalism and hardcore national parliament crash course. Does the upper house, the senate, and each state gets 12 and territories get two, and you vote for these guys with that long white ballot paper, and you pick all of them for your state or territory with them, so that's why they're so long. That you have to vote either above the line or below the line. You have to do one or the other, and above the line is group ticket voting, where you have to pick at least six. If you go below the line, then you can number the candidates individually that you prefer. Now the lower house, the House of Representatives, they're the guys you pick with the little green ballot paper and that's divided up by population so each state has a different amount. Only one person is picked with that ballot paper for the House of Representatives. When you vote you have to number all the boxes and if you number them just one, two, three, four all the way down that's a donkey vote. If you don't do anything or you draw a dick or something that's an informal vote. So there's 76 senators and 151 House of Representatives members. And the parties pick a leader amongst them, and then whatever party wins the most seats, that leader becomes our Prime Minister. 